Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Third Street Center, Carbondale, Colorado, on a beautiful spring evening. More snowflakes coming down. Thanks for coming out tonight. My name is Rita Marsh. I am co-founder of the Center for Human Flourishing. And tonight, I'm thrilled to meet again Andrea Vila. I'm realizing that we trained in TRE, Trauma Release Exercises, a few years back and had lost touch until Andrea came to the valley and did a housewarming for some friends and his work that he's doing now, writing a book on the Dante's Villa Nova, his expose of what love is, 14th century love, how it applies to us today. That's what he's up to. And so it's been delightful to re-meet him and to invite him to come to Third Street Center to do this introduction to his work. Again, thanks for coming out. And I'm going to turn it over to Andrea. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, thank you for coming. I have to stand behind the lectern because that's what always my mama wanted me to see, you know, behind the lectern. So. Um, probably won't, won't last very long, but um, I want to do, do a couple of things about housekeeping, um, which is only one thing actually. Uh, I've, I'm told I have a thick accent. Uh, I don't think it's true, but uh, so if you don't understand something, please raise your hand and ask me to repeat, or if you have any question, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not going to interrupt me. I'm totally, I'm totally fine with that. So this, um, this presentation is divided in two parts. There is an academic part, and there is more an existential part. So we're going to take care of the academic part first. That's why I'm standing behind a lectern. Um, what the, so we, we're going to talk about uh, Dante Ligieri. So we're going to talk about a period of the Italian history that goes between the end of the 1200s to the beginning of the 1300s. Uh, towards the end of this uh, courtly love uh, phenomenon that uh, started in, in Provence, northern Spain, in around the, the year 1000. So we're on the tail end of that. Um, I'm going to refer to two books. One is the Vita Nova, and uh, the other one is the Divina Commedia. The Divina Commedia is the most famous uh, work by Dante. Is, um, Dante has always been compared to is the Shakespeare of the Italian language. Uh, it's very famous. All, uh, I've been to at least three schools when I was a kid. They were all Dante Ligieri schools. Uh, um, it's very well known in Italy. He's the father of the Italian language. So is, and, and people quote liberally from him like English people quote from, from Shakespeare. Okay? So th I'm going to be mentioning the, the Divina Commedia, but just in passing. Because what we're going to concentrate uh, on is going to be La Vita Nova. La Vita Nova is the early, uh, early he, he wrote it in his late 20s, and it's the chronicle of his love affair with Beatrice, Beatrice Portinari in Florence. So um, that concludes my academic part. <laughs> so let's get on on the more existential, the juicy part, OK? Because in reality, I'm here, I'm not an academic. Um, uh, this is uh, the Purgatory of Dante Ligieri. It's about three lines and uh, about 50 notes. You know, uh, each of the books, uh, Purgatory, the, the, the Hell and Paradise, are as thick. You can look at there on, 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 my, on my chair. Um, So there is a lot, of st a lot of scholarship around Dante, but that is not my approach because I approached Dante because I was heartbroken, 
and, and it, that's what I found solace, that's what I found inspiration, that I found guidance. So um, I'm here because of a woman, you know, about 15 years ago, I don't remember when, but you know, I met this beautiful young woman, younger, much younger than me, woman in, uh, at a party, she, and she was very interested in me. And I thought that very, it was very odd. But um, she, you know, she, she really pursued me, and I was really hesitant because I thought she was a little bit of a hair head. Um, but I decided, what the hell, let's try it, you know? So we set up, uh, we make an appointment, and she cancels last minute, you know? Okay. Uh, then she, we make another appointment, and she cancels last minute. And I said, two strikes, I'm done, okay? So it, it was, I was done with her. Then what happened? I received a dream. And this dream was one of the top five dreams of my, of my life. And the dream, you know, dreams are usually confused, you know, unclear, you know, you're not very clear about the message. This time is one of the guys was crystal clear. This woman is the one, period. This is the woman you were waiting for. And not only this, but it was a, a mag something majestic about her, something spiritually majestic. I'm not going to go in details because they're really not relevant. But the impact was, with me was, was tremendous. You know? So I said, OK, let's give her a try. See this white, the white hair I have? They're totally useless. You know? So <laughs> I, I mean, let's give it a try. We went out for drinks drinks, we decided to meet for breakfast, and breakfast became lunch, so we couldn't separate, you know, there was really some sort of current between us. And um, we started a, a, an affair that lasted about two weeks, maybe three weeks, after which she dumped me, okay? And that's, you know, I wasn't surprised, it was, you know, I knew from the beginning, you know? Uh, what I was surprised, though, what was really hit me very really strong, that I fell into an incredible rabbit hole of despair. I was, I couldn't recognize myself. I totally lost, I was, you know when you're 15 years old, you fall in mad in love with somebody? It was worse than that, mm. in a grown man. It felt like a possession. And in fact, Dante, in the first page that we're going to read eventually today, of the Vita Nova, he says, Ecce dei forzioris mi, chi viene de mi dibatur mici. This is Latin. Whenever you know, he wanted to speak or to underline something, Dante uses Latin. Right? And what he says, he, when he sees Be Beatrice the first time, he says, here's a God. It wasn't Beatrice. It really, God came into him and said, here's a God stronger than me who has come to b dominate me. And that was really the best way I can uh, describe this, this, this feeling I had. Because um, um, I was really in a dark whirlpool. There was no way out. I didn't see the way out. It was just despair and depression and you know crying. It was, it was really strange, you know? Um, and, I, and I went like, um, there, there's, Dante described this, this situation, say, nel mezzo del cammino in nostra vita mi ritrovai in una serva oscura, che la diritta via era smarrita. Ai, quanta dir e cosa dura, esta selva selvaggia, aspre forte, che nel pensier rinnova la paura. These are the first four lines of the Divina Commedia, right before he's getting to hell. And it, what the translation is like, you, um, in the middle of the path of my life, I found myself in the dark, in dark timbers, that the right way was lost. Um, and just the thought of that place, it just scares me today. And that's how it starts. Um, in this dark timber, there are also wild animals. There's uh, lions and tigers and, and all sorts of uh, mythical animals. And it's just a really dangerous place. And uh, at a certain point, 
Virgil shows up. Virgil was his favorite poet. And he says, Dante, I was minding my own business in, in limbo when this lady showed up. And she said, please, go down and fetch this guy because he's really in trouble. And he understands that Virgil is referring to Beatrice. So in this moment of darkness, he remembers Beatrice and he, he collects himself. And he says, okay, let's go. And, he's, and, he's, and he says, let's go, and the next step is going into hell. Okay. And um, my Indian guru, I had a, you know, was very foolish when I was young, and I had an Indian guru. Uh, and uh, he used to say, because he used to swim in this big river, you know, Indians have got these big rivers with a lot of uh, uh, whirlpools. And the, the whirlpools are very dangerous. And he says, when I was a kid, I learned that you can't fight a whirlpool. The only chance that you have is to surrender yourself to it, because eventually it's going to spit you out. And guess what? How the hell is made? Hell is shaped as a, you know, Dante, Dante's hell is shaped like a, a spiral going down, 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 down. And at the bottom, it's Lucifer. And so you have to climb through Lucifer to get out. And once you get out, you find yourself in purgatory. Purgatory is a, is a mountain. And on the other side of the mountain begins paradise. And paradise is a, is a line, is a rose. And what is a rose, if not an inverted spiral? It's all the way up. And, and um, how the paradise ends. Paradise ends with this line. It says, L'amor che muove il sol e le altre stelle. It's a very fam famous line in Italian language. And, and, uh, and it's the, the love that moves the stars and the sun. The love, so the love, it is, the sun and the stars are not moved by gravitational forces. No, they're moved by love. And this is probably is the theme that inspired me in this, giving this workshop, or in this was supposed to be a workshop. But see, how do we connect to that love? Because um, that's what really aimed me. Um, that's what really sustained me. While I was crying up the mountains, I was walking at night and crying. It's like, there, is, there, is, there is a sense to this madness. There is, there is, there is, there is something that, that is meant to happen to me because of this. So, um, because in, in these periods of great sadness, also when I started writing, and I also started writing about um, gender uh, fables, um, fables, um, how the gender, uh, the, 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 the roles of the, in the fables of male and females are really different, and what that becomes to, uh, from uh, the idea of, you know, to love, uh, they live ever after uh, together. Where this ever after, where this ever after comes through? You know, what is the origin of this? And, um, which comes from the barbers, by the way, from, for the barbarian invasions. All, this, those, all these things that come from us, from, from the bar barbaric invasions, um, from the East. And great, great waves of population moving and merging with the with culture that they were in Europe, which basically gave, gave birth to us right now. So, but another re realization they had in that time is looking around, because I really was looking, what is, my, what is the medicine I can get out of this space where I am now? And the, and the medicine, you start looking around, and you realize that nobody's talking about love. You read books, you buy books, but it's all, all the books are about relationships. They're all about the exchange of goods and services between two people. There's nobody in modernity that talks about love. This third thing. And 
The other thing is like you notice that nobody talks about the grandiosity or the possibility of love between a man or a woman. And also I, I speak between love and a woman because that's what I know. I don't, I don't pretend to have the exclusivity on love, you know, but this is what I know, this is what I talk about. Um, so for what I had, there was no cure, no explanation, and no sense. If you want really approach some, a culture that has got some, some, that can address this thing, is that I was going through, is you have to go back to the Middle Ages, European Middle Ages, High Middle Ages, so the early Middle Ages. We're talking about the poetry of Provence. It was deeply influenced by the way that by the Arabic poet that, that, that was born in, in Persia, right? They traveled the way to, 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 because to, to southern France, and from France, they just went all over, you know, Spain, Italy, um, excuse me, Italy, Germany. Um, love was the court love, the love between a man and a woman, was the informing principle of the cultural discourse. What does it mean? It means that it, love was the essential part of the culture, when is, is what uh, love was the culture, what salt is to the ocean. That's the informing principle. Every time you taste the water and it's salty, you know it's the ocean. Every time you taste the culture, you have a fl flavor of the culture, and this love is was the Middle Ages. There are two informing principles in the Middle, middle Ages: love and God. So. You can go back before, you can go back to the Greeks and the great Socrates and Plato and their work in the symposium and Phaedro, but that was homosexual love. Homosexual love between an older man and a boy. So a big no-no for us right now. But all the, the, the work on the symposium, that's what they, they, it was considered the highest, highest form, form of love. Um, the Romans have no concept of love the way we have it now. None whatsoever. It was about uh, possession, control, domination. That's what they did to the world, they did it to the, to the person. The important thing that you were the active, active partner. That's how the Romans thought, thought about love. It was all about seduction, how to get the girl. Right? That, that was, there was no really conversation about love, it's, which is very interesting. Um, So, paradoxically, the concept that, the, of the love that we use, that we intend between men and women, we, we owe it to the barbarians. We, we owe it to all these people that didn't have a, a concept of economy, money. Those are the ones that develop the concept of love. And it, well, of course, you know, we, we have, a, in, in, towards the, bar the so-called barbarians, we have an incredible amount of prejudice. Because say, uh, you know, these people with the big horns, you know, that's what we see repeated every day in TV and whatever, in, even literature sometimes. Uh, but I would invite you for a second to think of the people who used to live uh, here before us. They were the nuches, right? They were considered from us, from the white people, who were considered savages, right? But yet they were so similar, so similar to the barbarians, the so called barbarians that invaded Europe. They had a re redistributive economy, so they had an accum economy acc accumulation. They have no use for money, they have a very low technology. They they encased the barbarians that love gold, that really love gold, but they didn't trade gold. They made beautiful things with it. They're, 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 they decorated the, the, all the, the, the horses. It was an old culture, horse culture, like this horse culture, the, the Native Americans, it was a horse culture. When you have, you know, nomadic, you don't want accumulation, but the health of your tribe is by redistributing. The kings in Middle Ages were redistributing uh, their, their, their wealth, and that's what they consider, uh, highly considered, when they had very little. 
Right, so we, there was very an upside down uh, thing. And, and, and we say later, they had no con uh, uh, concept of commerce. Actually, concept commerce was really looked down. So uh, there's, there's nice, there's nice uh, little stories. You know, the, the cowboys, they liked the, the big buckle, right? That's where it comes from. It comes from that time. The fact, I don't know, you, you probably remember there was a time when in, in, in this culture people used to get up or open the door for you, right? That comes from that time. And you have to understand something. There's not something that exists in China. It doesn't exist in Africa. It doesn't exist in, other, in, 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 in Amer South America, in Americans. This, this, this respect to the feminine, this uh, act of homage to the feminine, we learn it's from there. And th those people are, uh, are us, right? So you have to imagine, to, uh, you have to, when, you, when you're talking about this early mid Middle Ages time period, you have to imagine that general, the colonel Custer lost. The, the Nuches people won and create this new society that was based on their values, not on ours. That's how profound and deep was the transformation of that time. Because Romans did not add a love culture at all. When you say new chess, huh? you mean, do you, you mean, mean the, the youth? The, uh, the, youth the, the youth, yeah. So the indigenous cultures of Europe were they, the There are no indigenous, no, they're coming from the east. They're coming from the east, they're no indigenous. They were indigenous in the Urals, in Mongolia, in, in uh, Kazakh, you know, actual Kazakhstan, so all these people, they, they, when they, the gods, the Visigoths, all these people, they come from, from Ukraine, from all these areas there, they come over and they sweep, and they sweep through Europe. So, uh, and so what they create, they create this, this culture that, um, um, that, that was woman-centered. I know, it sounds like saying something <laughs> that <laughs> nobody speaks about this thing, but it's true. The culture of the high Middle Ages was woman-centered. Women were considered better than men, period. Not because of what they do, yes. No, no, actual women. Okay. And of course I'm talking about um, higher classes because th that's the one that, that left uh, a recording of the, what their life, mm -hmm. right? But women were absolutely um, uh, at the center of the culture. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the men were, were professing servitude to the men allegiance to the men. They were, it, it was a feral society, so they were considered their leaders, their sentimental and, and spiritual leaders. Okay, Th that's, that's what, you know, they, they, were, they, they were seeking to submit to, to, to the leader. That's, that, because love was the territory of men, not like now that we, we divert all our erotic capacity to the making of business and money. Well, I'll get there. I'll get well. I'll get there. I'll I'll, uh, I'll get there. Um, Good question. I'll get there. It's very. It, it takes the whole yeah. workshop to really understand this, me. but it's, it's just I'm hinting some things, but b yeah. because I flesh it out a little bit later, but it is really what happened, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and actually, it started going away. I mean, I can give you the, the short version. Is it started, it started going away with the Renaissance, mm -hmm. when they start printing money where it started printing flooring. That's where it started disappearing. It takes about 200 years, 300 years to disappear. But culturally, that's where it begins. So Dante is the last one. It's one of the last. There's Dante and Petrarca, and then it started going away, dissolving. Um, so Dante himself was a knight. Okay, he was, he was a knight. It wasn't like a guy, you know, I always make fun of the, my yoga, yoga friends, you know. It's like, you want to talk about love? 
learn how to use the sword. Because they, they, were, they, were, you know, they were men that they really uh, lived, lived and, and, and died by the swords. All the culture of the court of love is, is done by the troubadours, and troubadours were knights. Mm -hmm. And the knights they used to play very well, they used to speak very well, and eloquence is very important. So, um, in the, but we can't get to it tonight. So, um, so this is a very, um, very interesting. But what is the price? It's kind of academic. Who really cares? You know, what what is it? what I'm really more interested in is like what is the price that we pay because we don't have that culture? Okay, what is the the, the, the price? And and in reality, we pay no price. Take the word God and, and the word um, courtly love and the, the, the word God out of the Middle Ages, and you don't understand the Middle Ages. Uh, not only that you don't understand the Middle Ages, but the Middle Ages, ages would collapse. Now, take the word love and God from modernity, and what happens? So if you take the word God and love from, from, from the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. you, don't have, uh, you don't understand the Middle Ages. Not only that, but it would collapse. Economically, socially, the whole Middle Ages would collapse. Mm -hmm. okay. So the question is, take the world out from modernity, from now. Take the word God and love out of modernity. What happens? Really? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm very interested. Well, um, it's going away from Mother Nature. It's, uh, it's something else in control instead of the natural. Yeah. What, 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 is, what do you think? Um, I think, yeah, like we're seeing right now the yeah, yeah, but tech and uh, the AI and the lost about soul. Imagine for a moment tomorrow morning, right. and you wake up, you open the paper. Okay, there's no God. There's no the, the, the word God has been erased, and the word love has been erased. Does the newspaper change? No. Ours does. Yours, yes. <laughs> Your, of course. Your, but the newspaper doesn't change because it doesn't matter. Nobody speak about love these days because it doesn't matter. Yeah, we, we yeah, think nothing, of... Nothing would change. Exactly. Nothing would change. That's where we live. Because it's also, for me, love is the only thing that can make things change. We, we all agree on that. I'm not in disagreement. Yeah. I'm just saying, we, you know, um, I go to the example I made before of the salt. Okay. Salt, you know you're drinking the, the, uh, the water from the ocean because it's salty, right? In the Middle Ages, you know it's Middle Ages because it's, it's love of culture, it's love of culture. Those are the informing principle of the culture. So love is not any longer the informing principle of this culture. So take away the word computer. Take the word, the, the word away money and this world ceases to exist so that's why love you can say I love my dog I love my spouse spouse I love my daughter and they mean the same thing because it doesn't mean anything so you're saying modernity is sort of defined by that quip of Nietzsche, God is dead, and then how the modernist poets made fun of the romantic poets for talking about love and exalting love. Yeah, it, it, starts, it starts the, yeah, definitely Nietzsche was the first one, and the guy Ashen said, the guy Saber. The guy, by the way, Nietzsche, when he, when he writes the, uh, in Italian, it's called the La Gaia Scienza. I mean, the guys uh, is a Provencal. He comes from the Provencal. It says the guys saber, 
El Gai Saber was the way that the, province, the troubadours express themselves. The Gai Saber, because they have the knowledge and understanding of love. There was the gay means really the happy, the happy wisdom. That's what it, they talk, they, that's what they spoke, that's what they wrote, all this all the parsifals, all the all the all this this the, the the work they produced was all based on this, the guy Saber, because there is knowledge in love. There is knowledge in love, there is intelligence in love, which is disregarded because of rationality, but we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Um, so I just wanna give you an introduction of the the times, you know, the places and how the words are so important because um, words are very important. They, 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 I'm going to speak about it later, but as I'm sort of, they, they describe the, the circumferences, the circumferences of what is possible. You're not going to get there if you don't, uh, don't have a word for it. If the word love doesn't mean anything, or it means it's so, it's so uh, imprecise, that means everything, then you're going to be very confused. There, there are words that are very present in the Middle Ages, like between, describing love between uh, men and women, such as adoration or beatitude, that Dante uses very much. They have totally disappeared. They don't exist. We don't know what it means. I spent like a long time describing what adoration means. So, um, so let's go back to this love thing, to the meaning of this word. Um, All'alta fantasia qui manco possa, ma già voge al mio desio il velle. Si come rota che ugualmente mossa, l'amor che muove il sole e le altre stelle. These are the four lines, the last four lines of the, the paradise. So we've seen the, the, the first line, it's like, uh, the last line is l'amor che muove il sole e le altre stelle. There are three lines before that. Qui l'alta fantasia manco possa, e si vogia in irrisio il velle, Si come rota che ugualmente mossa il sol che il <laughs> l'amor che muove il sole e l'altra stelle. So what is, what is he saying here? Excuse me. Um, it, it's the last, it's the last, those are the last verses of the paradise. What happened to, to Dante is just seeing God. He not only has seen it, he has described God. If you want to do yourself a favor, just go read the last chapter of the last uh, canto of the Divina Commedia. He describes God. I think it's one of the only poet that, is, that I know that describes God. So the guy wasn't, wasn't shy. Um, it says, but here in his God, like, uh, is there is a flash in his mind. And this moment, in this moment says, l'alta fantasia qui manco posa. I lost my... my that my capacity to imagine and describe, by the way, imagination for Dante is an intellectual faculty that you share with God. That's how medieval people used to think. See, when you, God means something, you know, it's something you have in commune, you share with him. Um, so this, this capacity just been destroyed. As this capacity to my, the imagine and describe what, I, what I've seen and what I am, in the same moment, my desio el velle means my desire, my individual desire, and my will became, becomes one with a great will that is moved by the same love that moves the sun and the stars. So I become one with this love. My desire and my will are not separated. I'm one. And, and um, oof, I have goosebumps. Every time I, 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 you know, I, and I know this, you know, is, should in, is imprinted in me, you know, is, is, um, is uh, but every time I say, I say it, is, um, I get goosebumps. 
because um, I want that. I want to become, a sp Dante says, but I'm becoming a spoke of that wheel. Will you say it again? Huh? Yes. Certainly. Uh, ma l'alta fantasia qui manco possa, ma si voge al mio desio il velle, si come rota che ugualmente mossa, l'amor che muove il sol e le altre stelle. Translation? That's what it says. Like, I became a spoke in this in cosmic will. I became a spoke in this cosmic will that moves with love. With, it is moved by love. And by moving, moves the stars. This, by moving, mm -hmm. moves the stars and, the, and moves the sun and the stars. That's how it ends. Remember, we, we left, we began in this dark timber. I was crying up the hills. <laughs> Poor me. You know, that's, that's, that's the beginning point. And this is the end. Right? And it's all started with Beatrice, by the way. Because by Beatrice, if there is no Beatrice, there's, there's moment. This, these verses do not exist. Should we do the first reading? Huh? We got time for the first no, reading? No, 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 not no. quite. No. Okay, now, to say one more thing, this is very, it's very important. That, that is, so we, we said like, what amore is, is really a, a weak word. It doesn't mean very much, you know, because, you know, this is a, a lectern, you know? We know what it means, you know. So you say, Riley, because you bring me the lectern, he knows, you know, he's going to go and get me a lectern. But he says, love, what does it mean? You know, it's like, does he want to make love to me? He, he likes me? You know, there's all this variety. It's, it's, no, it's not a strong word. So, so here with this, the word that Dante uses is amor. It's not love. And the translation, the, is, the translation is right, but there's a big problem there. There's no big problem, but there needs to be uh, clarification. Because uh, all Northern Italy has the word lub, love. You know, the Germans, Lieben, the Russian, Lofa, um, and Scandinavian words, the Scandinavian people, the same thing. And, and uh, it, the word love comes from this uh, Indo-European um, word that means to care for. The word amore comes from kama, is a, a, a Sanskrit word, right? So it means kama, kama sutra, kamala, kamala Harris is our president, our vice president, you know, so that's where it comes from. It drops the K as it travels east, it becomes amor. A more, a more for French people, a more for, uh, for so, but a more, you see, I cannot say, it's, I cannot say, I love you, mom, I cannot say, ti amo, mamma, because a more indicates a sexual or a physical connection. So, what Dante is talking about, l'amor che muove sole la trestelle, so the love that moves the stars and other stars, it's not love, it's kama, it's eros. Is the love that I want I have for that girl is is no is a physical attraction. It's not like something like oh we all love we all one no 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 no. It's it's, it's an it's an embodied word. And that pre presents some problems because it's like um, in, in Italian there are no words for longing. There's no word for longing. On the other hand, you know, the, the, the English word has got a lot of beautiful spiritual word about love, you know, this longing, longing is one. It's very important for the erotic, longing is, is the most important word. But, um, so the, there is no transcendence, there is no transcendence in, in, in the word amore. There is in love, the word love, there is transcendence, but not in amore. So this is, in, and so when, when, um, um, when I'll, I'll be speaking from now on about love, we, in reality, I'm speaking about amore. Because he loved uh, Beatrice, not like it's an aesthetic thing out there. No, no, he loved Beatrice. He was an embodied love. 
He, loved it. he wanted to love her physically. But the greatness of the poem and the greatness of his life and the greatness of, of the uh, erotic poems of the Provencal poets of, you know, 2,000 years ago, not 2,000, but, you know, 1,200 years ago, is that they spoke about this love as a transcendence. Because um, I think it's a birthright. And I feel it's my birthright to experience that thing. Because the, 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 the way I experience it, I experience it as a compulsion. I don't experience it like, ah, it's so beautiful, nice feeling. I experience, oh, and I think all men, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but all men experience this as a, oh, something that is not really, really uh, easy to handle or easy to live with. It's not easy? No, no, not easy at all. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's not easy at all because it's, it's uh, uh, the, the Greeks uh, had this beautiful, it's disruptive. Eros is disruptive. It's, it puts you out there, it wants you, and, but the Greeks had a beautiful image for the, for this thing. They, they, they always depict the arrows as an erected penis with wings. Disruptive. Talk a little bit. Why, yeah. yeah. Why disruptive? Because, because it's demanding. It com it's a compulsion. Uh -huh. It's a compulsive. In fact... That you have no control? I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting right there. It's my last night. Last night. The, the way they describe it in, in uh, this beautiful line in... in uh, when I read it, I went, oh, I love Socrates so much in Phaedrus. I, I have a question, it was way back when, when you first started. Um, was that the first time that you were ever, that you loved? It was the first time? Oh, no, loved? no. Yeah, so why was that so, why was it so different when it, um, why was it so different then? That's a beautiful question, and, and uh, I don't know if I can answer it. Because right, you, right. Yeah, I mean, did you not have uh, any uh, recourse or re? Uh, because I had to discover this. Yeah, yeah. Because because I was guided to discover this. Okay. Because I obeyed the dream. I chose. In, okay. If you wait one one more okay. five minutes, we're gonna get to the page <laughs> because it's it's okay. uh, actually it's to, would, be, would have been tomorrow, uh -huh. but because his uh, the Vita Nova Dante is all informed by dreams. They tell him to do this, do that, do that. Okay. And all, he has conversations with his dreams yeah. in his uh, after, after sleep side. So it's a beautiful question, and, and we're going to get it, you know, uh, eventually today <laughs> a little bit, okay? But when, you say, when I said before that, that this vortex spot me out, mm -hmm. and here I am, mm -hmm. so instead of medicate myself or saying, you know, oh, I'm going to get it, because Dante has got the same offer. You know, at some point, uh, Beatrice dumps him, right? And pff, all, all hell breaks loose for him, too. And he can say, oh, I can't get another one. But he doesn't. You know, he sticks with it. So, but, so he says, um, let's make, uh, we make things right. So it, it, uh, the Socrates tells his pupil, it's like, uh, he recites this poem and he says, we make things rise. Meaning, but the translation is pteropitor uh, ananken, uh, which is a wing making compulsion. And this for me is the best way to describe man that I've ever seen in my life. Mm. It's a wing making compulsion. Uh, an erected penis without wings, the world dies. Because it's about me, 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 me. Only wings, the world dies. Because nobody does doing anything. Erected penis with wings. And that ain't easy. That ain't easy. And we're gonna go in there after this, um, um, after the reading, 
but is is um, uh, are we doing on time? Whoa, okay, I'm getting there. Um, The other thing is like, you know, also for the Greeks, there are no winged vaginas. You know, because they were uh, misogynist. There, were there are no winged vaginas. Right. There is no equality. Okay. okay. There's no equality. So, and I think this, is, and, and the Greeks were very misogynist. But in this case, they were not. Because I think the, the direction of the, 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 the f feminine is towards the earth, right? Well, we go higher. And between this very inefficient system, life is born. But this, this contrast is this, 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 this distance. So, um, in fact, like, I believe that Eros is the mythology of men, and Aphrodite is, is, is the mythology of women. So these two directions are governed in two di by two different gods, as they should, as they should. So, yeah, we're here, we're there reading. So we can start, we can start with, uh, we can start at this, um, with, because uh, as I said before, um, so this, this contradiction, this, this, this desire to have wings, to go to this love that, has, that, that can move stars, that does, not can, that does move the stars and the sun. So starts with an erected penis. That's the, that's the, the arc of Eros. That's the arc of love in Dante's understanding of the world. So, and as I said before, Dante cannot write the Divina Commedia if he doesn't meet Beatrice. And finally, I can close my mouth and we're gonna meet her. <laughs> so this is Adrian Victor, is my uh, designated reader for Dante. So this is the first page of the Vita Nova, which is this early work, chronically his love, love affair with Beatrice. In the book of my memory, the part of it before which not much is legible, there is the heading. Oh, I don't have it. Incipit Vita Nova. Incipit Vita Nova. Yeah, I'll be here. Under this heading, I find the words which I intend to copy down in this little book. If not all of them, at least their essential meaning. Nine times the heave of the light had returned to where it was at my birth, almost to the very same point of its orbit when the glorious lady of my mind first appeared before my eyes. She, whom many called Beatrice, without even knowing that was her name. She was at the beginning of her ninth year when she appeared to me, and I saw her when I was at the end of my ninth. She appeared dressed in a very stately color, a subdued and dignified crimson, girdled and adorned in a manner that was fitting for her young age. At that time, truly I say, the vital spirits which dwells in the innermost chamber of the heart started to tremble so powerfully that its disturbance reached all the way to the slightest of my pulses. And trembling, it spoke these words. Ecce deum forzioris me, qui vienis domidibatur mici. Here is a God stronger than I who comes to rule me. In the animal spirit which dwells in the spirit of vision, it said, Apparuit beatitude vestra. Your beatitude has now appeared. At that time, the natural spirit, which dwells where the food is digested, started to cry. And crying, it spoke these words. 
Eu miser quia frequentur impeditus ero de sepis. For me, I shall be greatly affected. From then on, I swear that love dominated my soul, which was wedded to him so early and began to rule me with such a confidence and power by means of the force my imagination lent him. There was no choice but for me to do whatever he wanted. Time after time, he ordered me to search for where I might glimpse this youthful angel so that in my boyhood, I went to look for her often and observed that her bearing was so dignified and praiseworthy that it can truly be said of her as Homer wrote, she did not seem the daughter of a mortal man, but rather of a God. And even though her image, which was constantly with me, was the means by which love ruled me, it was so dignified in its power that it never allowed love to govern me without the faithful counsel of reason in those matters where such guidance was helpful. First page of the Vita Nova. What does it mean, Vita Nova? It's in fact, it says, Incepit Vita Nova. The beginning, so Vita is life. Nova is new. Incepit Vita Nova means the beginning of my life. There's another place I got goosebumps. Because uh, it's the moment where something comes and claims your life. So it's a fork in the road. So life presented Dante with his fork in the road. And from now on, his life will belong to this vision. He'll, he'll, he'll carry Beatrice through the Vina Commedia, through his old age. That's where his life begins, Vita Nova. Until this moment, his life was not his. It was the life of a boy that is told to do what he's told to do. This is the moment he owns his life. He owns his life by choosing it, by choosing Beatrice. And I don't think that, so I think, I, I'm a firm believer that this moment happens to everybody. In this particular case, case it depends on a woman. It depends, it depends on the experience of love. Because you say, there's a, there's a God that is up here. My body is shaking. I can't digest anything. I will be greatly affected. He's possessed like I was. He's nine years old. But this is all centered on a woman, on a female, on a young girl like he is, nine years old. And I think nine years old is the time of vision. In fact, it was the time chosen for initiation. All the, the Native Americans, all the, everywhere in the world you go. Uh, it, it, that's the moment when you are ready to become a human being. Not before. Until you fall in love, you're not a human being. Then you're ready to really learn the ropes of what is what it's like to be a man. And I say to be a man because of what I'm familiar with, but is is um, the only initiation will be especially for men, a period of very, very long, very long time of work. Um, and and the way we treat in, in, in this in this world is is um, we treat it like it's indigestion. You know that it's, it, uh, you know it's going to go away. 
you know, indigenous society is really like the most important event. That it really has to be studied and, uh, uh, the, and, uh, and, and really searched and, and exposed. And actually, I, I would like for you to close your eyes for a second. And, and close your eyes, and I want you really to, what it, when, when your Vita Nova began. Close your eyes, please. And it's, 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 it's going to come to you in a flash. Either it comes in a flash or it's, it's not going to come. It's not something that's going to look good on your, your, your resume. It's something that probably you still, you still have not understood. You still know how the spirit lived. Uh, but when did your life begin? When you realized that there was something about you that is not, that is you. It belongs to you. It's your, it's your, it's your, the, the expression of your, the, of your uniqueness. In my case, it got nothing to do with a, with a, with a, with a girl. Uh, and it happened when I was six years old. And then I had another one when I was eight years old. And then another one when I was 13 years old. It's when you're imprinted with something. You're zapped. Something comes out from the beyond and reaches for you. All right, open your eyes. Any like any, any light bulb you want to share? Anything happen? The word vitality came. The word vitality? Ah, and how old were you? Like 16. 16. All right, thank you. And Rita, anything come up? You don't have to share. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm tr honestly curious. It's not like I'm, there's no processing. I just want to. Well, just Incredible connection with nature, with, with the tree. With, um, hey, well, how old were you? Five or six years Five or six old. old. Yeah. Being able to climb into the branches of the tree mm -hmm. and see forever. Yeah. But you see, you remember it though, right? Mm -hmm. You went like, boom, it's there, right? <laughs> yeah. Just um, given the context of Dante and Beatrice, thinking of the first time that I felt in love and oh. was 10 and ah, just, 10, eh? Yeah, like how it was 9. How that shifts. Ah, beautiful. Really real. Yeah, that spirit that enters you that stirs things up that didn't exist before. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Adrian? I had that one too about 8 or 9. Uh, but another image that came to my mind was uh, when I was like 5 um my family moved to a new house that was by a creek, and um, it was all clean. The house was all clean. The carpets were immaculate, and uh, I don't know. A couple of days after we moved in there, I got I started getting in that creek, and I found myself a frog, and I was so proud of that frog. I walked in the house, and I was gonna, and I showed it to my mom, and she said what are you doing with those muddy shoes on in our carpet? <laughs> yeah. That That's what's the, the, the beginning of the education of uh, environmental education. Yes. <clears throat> I'm still proud, um, proud of that frog. <laughs> um, so so what's, what's happening, what's happening in this thing? So boy sees girl, right? That's what's happening. And, and in, in a classical, yes? Does boy see girl before girl sees boy? Say again? Does boy see girl before girl sees boy? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, the next passage is when girl sees boy. Mm -hmm. Very important. Mm -hmm. 
to be seen by a, by a girl is very important. And this court to love is, is very fundamental. But I, I don't even think, I don't know if we're going to get there. <laughs> because there's so much in this, in this piece. Can I have, a, can I have the, the, the piece? There's, there's a tremendous amount in this thing. Because what is happening right now is what, in the classical terms, is called is an erotic experience. Dante is erotic experience. Because, see, uh, in, in modernity, we, we think that uh, of Eros like, as kind of like a, a vitamin for the sex, for your sex life. You know, it's kind of like it jolts you to some sort of aliveness, you know, vitality. And, and um, uh, in reality, uh, Eros is the, Im- is, is the impact of beauty on your mind. That's what is erotic. Okay, it's the impact of beauty on the mind. It can be anything. Your tree, it can be art, it can be your spouse, it can be anything. You know, it, 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 the impact is, is, the beauty doesn't have to be the body of another person. But because Eros, because we're talking Amore, in this case, we, we, are, we are connecting to that. Okay, that's the other thing. So, and then, and, and, also, also in classical terms, what is beauty? What is beauty? Everybody has experience of beauty, right? But what is beauty? That That's a tough one, no? Transports us. Very good. Yeah. Say again. That which transports us. Right. Oh. Transports us where? But you have to finish the phrase. That's very good. You, you, yes. Up. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, Transports us up. Yeah, there's yeah. transport us, yeah. or transport us where, where towards the invisible. Yeah. Towards the invisible. And it is a, is a symbol. It's a, what is it called? It's a symbol. So symbol is what the record, so symbol is a Greek word, right? So it comes from the, the, when two friends were partying, they were breaking a dish, and each was keeping one half. So when they were reuniting, they were uniting the symbol, or when the, their sons or daughters were united, they were bringing the, the, this, this, the, half, the half that was missing as a, um, as, a symbol, as, a, as, a, as a token of their friendship, right? Because that's what beauty does. Beauty, beauty is reuni- reunites you, it's simple, puts you back together with the invisible. So when you see something beautiful, your gaze doesn't exhaust the, the object that you see. There's something that's missing. There's always point to something else. There's po- something that you can't see, that you can't control. So that's, that's what the experience of beauty, that's what the beauty is in this context. I mean, I'm sure there are people that... that uh, um, and so something that reconciles, reunites with the invisible to an ulterior meaning. The meaning that, you know, that is not in the object, there's something else that speaks through that. Um, and you know, unfortunately, um, we, 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 we have incredible um, strategies to avoid this beauty. And it's in the language, you know. The, the, mo- the moment you introduce the word to be, you say, the moment you say, that, that rose is beautiful. The moment is beautiful, you say is, means you create a separation between you, between you and the experience of beauty. Because the, if you really um, um, look at a rose, you might, the risk is you can fall into the abyss. You become her is the falling into her. And that's the, the risk of beauty. That's the challenge of beauty. Because beauty is a, is a promise that transforms me. That's the essence of beauty. And that's what the, that's what the erotic thinkers, they always know this. This is the, the base of the other. The beauty I see in the other is going to transform me. Because it sends me something that is now uh, is now here. 
Um, because the question is like, you know, there's this abyss because, okay, if I'm not the, if, if I'm, you know, um, so if I'm not the rose, who am I? So it's, it is, it is a very, it's a very, um, um, the experience of beauty is, is, is very, is very complex. And, and that reminds me to another thing, it's like, that is, the, the erotic is a sensation, it's not a feeling. It's the smell of the roses. Uh, Dante's got a physical experience. It's, it's shaking, I'm shaking here, I'm shaking there, my stomach is upset. You know, it's a physical experience. It's a physical possession, right? And, and um, eros is the capacity to stay with a rose with your senses, not with your story. Oh, you are so beautiful. Done. You're not there. There's not an erotic moment anymore. See, that's eros. The capacity to be, remain present to beauty. And, and we, make it, we make it a feeling Because when, when we're a child, we are discouraged to experience the world and to experience in, with the senses. Yeah, take that thing out of your mouth. Because th that's how the kid learns, is, is through the spirit, the full experience of the body. You know, it's sticking in the head, the, you know, whatever that is, they want to know it with the senses. And then when we are, we, you know, we are castrated in this, experience on the world, and that's called school. Now then you're sent to school, and then where it's like, forget it. Your senses, your body is not the territory of learning. But something else becomes the territory, you know, something you can play with, something you can touch, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, we, know, we all know that sentence of the story. So, and that's why, especially when we make love, we always all go like in, 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 uh, in fantasies, imaginations. Because we cannot remain with the sensation of the of love making. So, um, and and Socrates has got in symposiums got a, is a beautiful beautiful imagination to make us understand what eros like. He calls it a ladder. It's called it's a diotima ladder because it says Socrates says I know nothing about love. Everything I know diotima taught me. A diotima is a woman. Is a was a priestess. And, you know, just to, there's a relation to the medieval thing. The, the, the guys say, I know nothing about love. Everything I know is belongs to a woman. Okay. So, um, and he says, if you stay in a cessation of beauty, beauty becomes a ladder. And each rank is this different, uh, there's a hierarchy for the Greeks that we use to be a hierarchy of, of passages. You know, for the love of beautiful uh, body, you start a love of beautiful action. For love of beautiful action, you go higher, higher, higher until until you encounter, you have an experience of pure beauty. And this can happen in in the progression of your, your relationship with this person, or it can happen instantaneously. All this journey can happen at once, right? And and um, and it says that you, the destination is the pure beauty or the origins of beauty. And this is a journey that is available to everybody, and happens every time you are with your beloved. There's no tantra, no exercises, no nothing. It's available to you in that moment because you're a human being. And that's the erotic ladder that you can climb. Uh, another way to, to, to describe this is also very nice that the, the is in Pedro, Pedro's, that when you see the other, when you see your beloved, when it happens this time, 
in, in what the last passage when he sees Beatrice, your souls remembers. Your souls remember, start stealing and moving within you. And it starts actually hitching in the back because it starts sp sprouting wings. That's how Socrates describes it. It's very lovely. Mm -hmm. And so this, what, it, what he remembers, he remembers when your soul was, was with this, in, in the beyond, in this, where there was this big fairy, kind of fairy's wheel where they were ascending, ascending together with the gods. And at the top, they were contemplating pure beauty and then coming down and descending. And then after 10,000 years, they would come out and incarnate, take the body. I said, that's, that's what happens. So you remember through the, through the beauty of the, the, your beloved, the, your place of origins. So Eros is fantastic because, and you will see the last reading we're going to do. Um, there's this... This thing that happens at the same time is a moment to remember something of the beyond. At the same time is a moment where you discover your, your, your future changes, like in Dante. So your future is spent, because the other you're in love, your, 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 your present expands, your sense of self expands, your possibilities expands, what is possible expands. And as the experience of love is, is something you become bigger. You made me bigger, right? And at the same time, he goes back in time. You remember a place of origin. And it's happened at the same moment. And this is the beauty of the erotic. This is um, the depth of the erotic. And, and uh, you know, the, we get in there. We'll, Um, so let, 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 me, let me go back to this thing. We have strategies of, they are called beauty avoiding strategies, mm -hmm. right? It's language. It's not only the language. There, there, there are a lot of, lot of them. Um, uh, you can um, you say, uh, I'm too busy. Oh, she, you know, the, uh, so the girl was looking at me, but I'm too busy, I have to go to work. You know, busyness, that's a big one, right? Um, sexual organs. Sexual organs can be a way to avoid beauty because when you're, when you're beloved, you're making love and you become really uncomfortable, especially men, especially men. They become very uncomfortable when they start experiencing intimacy. And they say, oh, goodbye, because you, you don't know how to deal with this. We know we now have no education how to deal with this experience of beauty. That all this transformation that can happen, this ladder will be climbed, and we say, "Oh, guys, oh, goodbye, I'm done." So, um, and there, are, you know, there, 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 you know, the desire to own beauty—that's another one. But why? Why are we avoiding beauty? Why we have all these strategies? Fear. Yeah, absolutely. But fear of what? Absolutely, very good. Somebody give this woman a rose. Huh? Huh? Yes, absolutely. With what? We'll lose what you're desiring. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I don't think. Or that it won't stay. Or that it yeah, they won't last. Yeah, life. yeah, I know. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not contradicted, but I think there's something else. Because you, you were good with the fear. I think it's a bigger fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you know, you don't use yourself. You lose your rational mind, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, and you have to understand something. Your rational mind is the highest value of this culture. 
is the highest value of this culture. It is your identity, not the rose. Because, oh, no, I'm going to fall in this. And that's what you have to pay. And so let's, let's speak about this. Because this, this, you know, and, and being in love with you, say, the first thing you say, I'm crazy about you. What do you mean? You lose your, your rationality, right? I'm crazy about you. But the great mistake we, we make, this is the greatest mistake, and it's really why, this, why I do this, really, is because rationality is not intelligence. Rationality is not thinking. It's got nothing to do with thinking. Rationality is the capacity to, to measure. It's what you use when you park your truck. That's rationality. It's, 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 a ratio, it's, a, it's an Italian, it's a uh, Latin word. It means uh, measure. You know, one cow, four ships, or whatever. You know, it's a capacity to count, not to think. Big difference. It's, it's, so when you walk in, in the woods, you, 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 see, you don't see the forest, you see how many cubic feet of stuff there is. When you see a woman, you see sex. That's the rationality. And that's what we're afraid to lose, by the way. Right? And, and, and in fact, the Greeks used to call it uh, when eros or being with eros or falling in love. They used to call it, um, they used to call it mania, folly, right? But folly is there's a, you know there's the irrationality, but it's also something that you gain because they say when when you go to this. The, when you climb this ladder, this ladder, you go up, and when you go to encounter the, the, the chaos of the God, you start roaming with the gods, and the, the gods can be one thing in one day. And it's like living in a dream, you know, getting into the dream. And dream has got multiple reality, multiple senses all out going at once. In, in reality, you, we assess a, a cosmos that we cannot see because we, we still use the rationality. Because this is the place of great creativity. In fact, what the Greek says is that you, ass you assess this place, which is the seat of all creativity. And when you come there, you get impregnated with this beauty. And you descend, you become pregnant. And this pregnancy gives you weight. And the weight makes you come down. And when you come down, so your relationship with the other, so your relationship becomes the place where you bring this pregnancies, pregnancies can, can be more than one to term. So pregnancies, so relationships are not the place where you get your, your, your needs met. See, these are very practical applications. It's not like up, out there in the, this is very practical. Because if, 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 if a gentleman comes to me in my coaching practice and say, oh, you know, this woman drives me crazy because of this or that, right? I don't care about it, what a woman does or doesn't. I don't care about it, his pregnancy. Is this just driving you crazy or you're learning some, or something is, is, something, something is, is coming, germinating because of you, because of this woman? What, what he just read is the moment where Dante becomes pregnant. He doesn't know it. It would take him 20 years because he's a man. But he knows that this life is different. That's all he knows. But that's the point that it becomes because of Beatrice, because of that moment, because he chooses that moment. I chose that dream. And that's where I'm here, I'm here with, in front of all these thousands of people. <laughs> So, um, this is very, very, uh, it's a very empowering way to talk, to, to talk about relationships, you know. Very empowering. Because you really, 
sidestep the old prima. Oh, she did this, she did this. No, let's look at me. Let's see. You see, I'm creating this third thing, which is in the relationship, which is the love, because um, even in this little piece that we heard, there is a third thing coming up. There is there's Beatrice, but there's also this God that appears that is stronger than me. Not only this, but it's this voice. He start hearing voices. Do you understand how it changes? He start hearing voices. They're very curious. Right? Your beatitude has appeared. Your beatitude has appeared. A God stronger than me is, the, is here. There's a third thing. So there's a lot happening, but this is the beginning of his pregnancy. And it's happening th this very moment. So, um, the same thing happens to in lovemaking, you know, for a man. I'm talking for a man, of course, you know, but it's like lovemaking, this, the same process uh, happens. It's, it's like it's the this bridge that is being between this rational part and this Erebus, this, this primordial soup, where, where, where is, you know, you experience, you experience yourself like a wave of this great ocean, of which, you, you know, you're a wave of this great ocean. That's the moment you, you, you lose yourself. Love making is not the, 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 the satisfaction for the satisfaction of the ego. It's for the dissolution of the ego. But all the dissolution of the ego is a good thing because that's what makes you creative. Oh my goodness, so late. Um, all right. Um, well, it's not that late. It's, it's getting late. Any questions? Please. Is, is, there, is there a time that balance comes in? Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. I keep looking at people for, um, and I just, I just feel that how can we be so far away from understanding each other's, of male and female's, um, balance? Yeah. Um, um, well, it, this it is a whole day workshop, but it's, it's um, um, a beautiful question. And if uh, the word balance is always a, a, I call it a feminine, a feminine w word, right? And and. Um, and, and I'm talking about erotic, which is really the more masculine ex expression of this thing, right? Right, but, but that's also for a woman too. I mean, they. Yeah, no, it works. No, it works, but it's not the. the uh, see, this is the the way the, pri uh, the oh, primary okay. expression in the is the masculine. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Does it apply for the men? Of course. For the female, yes, but it's not a primary. In fact, we're gonna go to the female right now. It's a beautiful question. But I wanna. Preface that with that, what is, because um, what's the difference between man and a woman? The essential difference. This is a beautiful question you just asked. And I'm, uh, we're going over time. I hope it's okay with you. Uh, another at least 15 minutes is okay? Yeah, okay, thank you. I can think of one. Please. Um, well, you, you've been to my lecture before. Uh, so no, it's cheating. You're, you're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> well, w uh, women are born with a body of two. Yeah, but I told you that. Yeah. It's not fair. <laughs> yeah, but this we, is... We this. Don't, we don't... Men, we're not born with, with the downloaded instructions for how to create life and how to, how to have relationship. How to care for life. Um, so... Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Please. What about like men that, um, you know, are tasked with raising the child? 
Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. It's a fair question. But let, let me f f give you, because, you know, it was just sneaking, sneaking, <laughs> some, this is a sneaky guy. Okay. So we have the body of the one. We have no, and the women have a body of the two. So it's the body that is uh, naturally attuned to feel another person, right. to take care of another person. To have intimacy. Have what? Intimacy. Intimacy. Int intimacy. Intimacy. Okay, thank you. We have no clue on intimacy. None. Zero. Zero. Sorry. Men have no. <laughs> no. We have to learn yes. intimacy. And that's the greatness of these nights. They were saying to the women, say, kneeling, say, please teach me. Please teach me, because I don't know. And to you I see intimacy. Say again? And to you I see intimacy. What? But you know, the, the funny thing is, like, that's what the women mm. did. The women, they. Mm -hmm. wants from a man, I think he wants mm -hmm. her to see into her. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what made me. Um, let me let me uh, ask you. So there are too many things. I, I mean, I'm glad to have all this interest, but we are a little bit. Uh, is, this is a step by step approach. So, uh, so to answer your question, the can, can I can you can you take care of a kid? Of course, being a man, of course, you will do a great job. But you're not going to be aligned with your the, your natural gift. So it's going to be much harder for you than, than it's going to be for it. It's, it's very simple. You know, I'm going to see something that. The, that is, I'm gonna see in a, I'm gonna say something blasphemous in a minute, and you're gonna put me on tape, and 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 it's gonna be, uh, but it's you know, as a matter of really being aligned with, you know, I don't have the body or two, you know where men learn intimacy? The mothers. Huh? No, no. The men have intimacy. Uh -huh. They have a very strong intimacy. In fact, we're gonna do one at 27. This 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 event up in uh, in Carbondale, up in the ranch, where we did, we would definitely talk about intimacy. But we have the intimacy of conflict. Yeah. We become intimate with with another man through conflict. It can be sport. It can be a game. It can be so because we have it really you know we really. Uh, formed by war, by, by conflict, by, by working together with our, I mean, against other, other men. Yeah. So this is how we develop, you know, also because we develop uh, intimacy without using language. Mm -hmm. By doing things together. It's very, very different. And this has got a lot of, uh, uh, can be, this information can be extremely useful in a relationship. Right. Do you understand? Right. It's got a lot of potential. Unfortunately, we still, you know, this is tomorrow. So, uh, but it is, it is, it is, it is a great discussion. It's a great point. I love to discuss about this thing because it's got, it's, it can, it's got a great pragmatic um, effects, you know, and results. Okay, and there's nothing that scares men more than, than, than intimacy. But even in, in a sexual act, you know, the, so, you know, we don't develop uh, oxytocin. In a sexual, you know, vasopress, you know, we have vasopressin. When we make love, we don't, you know, it takes a long time for us. We don't have even the receptors. And oxytocin is the hormone of connection, is the frontal vagus that we were talking before, me and you, right? And it's the capacity to have this uh, hormonal signal, these emotions. We don't have physically. We're incapable. That's, it takes a long time. That's why you know the, this free sex that is happening in, in the, these days is, women, is get, huh? women. So women get um, connected when they have sex. Uh, absolutely. Men don't. Men, so we don't. And, yeah. We don't, and it, and it, that's very frustrating for yes. women. Yes. And but we have to learn how to be. As yes. I said before, how to be present. So erotic, it is the erotic discipline. Mm -hmm. I remain present to love, mm -hmm. to beauty, to my woman. 
This is the erotic bliss. This, he learned the constant love. Dante used, used to be a, a, oh my goodness, you got me going now. Uh, uh, Dante was a fedele d'amore, which means a faithful to love. It was a secret society of poets. They were exchanging poets. It means faithful to love. This faithful to love it is the erotic discipline. Is the capacity mature, to re, huh? mature, a man has to mature. But you see, men understand discipline. Yeah. They understand discipline. Yeah. But now they've given a, been given a free pass. Oh, you can do whatever you right. want. Just make money. But that's tomorrow. Unfortunately, it is. It's, uh, yeah. it, good job. Let, let me let me get crucified here. Let me uh, go back to this moment, the Vita Nova, also because I want to conclude. You know, I want to send you home. Um, there is a, this image, the boys meets girl, right? There is a parallel on the female side. What is it? It's a very famous thing. It's been painted hundreds and hundreds of times. It's very common in all the Christian culture. What is the moment? It's, and, and, write, and if you notice, Dante writes this moment as a, as a specular image of the female mo moment. He uses the same language. What is it? Is it the feeding of a child? Huh? The feeding of a child? No. No, it's a very important moment. Eh? I agree with you, but it's not... And, and it's not related to this moment. So the moment when the Vita Nova, the, the, the new interpret Vita Nova, the, the beginning of a new life for a man. It happens with this woman, right? So what is the beginning of a new life for a woman? And it's structured like, like, like what we just read. Again? No, it's not. Yeah, I'm talking about an, an image, something cultural. Yeah. You know, that is very evident. I mean, first menstruation is very important. Virgin Mary? <laughs> Absolutely. Immaculate. Absolutely. Conception. Another rose. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 I, have to, I have to get you another rose. I'm going to get an A in this huh? class. <laughs> 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 I have to get you that. <laughs> so, absolutely. Is the Annunciation. And the Annunciation, what happens in Annunciation? So the angel appears and Beatrice appears. Same words. Same words. Beatrice appears, the angel appears. Okay? What happens to, to the Virgin? Virgin, by the way, is bad translation there. But they say, what happens to, to Mary? Mary gets scared. Right? Gets surprised, scared, her body, right? She's, got, she's frightened. And, and the angel said, fear not. Right? Fear not. Right? And, and, uh, and then he, he says, um, um, he says, the Lord, you know, he says, fear not, the Lord, is, he said, fear not, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And here we go a little bit on, on tricky territory, but the Lord is with you, with, is in Greek is called is metasu. And metasu signifies with, but signifies also in, and also signifies through. And these are now small distinctions. Because with is like you're two, right? There's a separation, you're, you and God, right? But in you, hmm, very different, right? Wow. Through you, yeah, there's no distance because you have the body of the two, right? right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Because you have the body of the two. This is very, very important because that's, the informing principle of the feminine. Remember the salt you can taste? 
and what it is. What it is. And now what I'm going to get crucified. So the virgin as an encounter, is it, that's an initiatic moment, right? Like Dante is going, is, that's his initiatic moment with see Beatrice. The virgin is another initiatic moment. So what, what it means? It means that she acquaints herself with the informing principle of life. So to, to have the body of the two, it's not like, okay, I have a little bit more, I have an edge on, 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 uh, on intimacy, which is actually huge. There's no edge, there's a huge advantage. Something else. She, she, gets, she gets acquainted with their, their, their power, and her power is not, what is, it? what is the power of in that moment? It's not her. It's not her. So it's, it's not, you know, actually, it, it is her. It is absolutely her. It's not God. Mm. God is very weak in this moment. No, she's not a vessel. Mm. No, this is vessel is a very bad thing to say, I think. Really? Yeah. Because, um. because uh, actually she, what she gets in touch with is with a power, which is not, what is the power of the virgin? Wings or or no, it's got everything to, to do with love. Yeah. It's the capacity to gestate God's love. The power of the feminine is the capacity to gestate. It's not the capacity to create. To gestate? Gestate, the gestation. Oh, gestate. So you never see a woman, a pregnant woman say, right. oh, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make some blue eyes now. See, there's no rationality. The eyes are gonna come out, they're gonna come out beautiful. Right? So that's the, that's the power of the feminine. The, the power to create without doing. Okay. So what she's a vessel. That's the last hmm? part? Second? That's the last part. It's the power to create without doing. Without doing. Right. Okay. Right. Mm, okay. And all these women these days and age that they want to they wanna create mm -hmm. is because they're not loved. And that's where I get crucified usually. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, women can create, of course they can create. Your question you didn't, is behind the question that you ask. I know you didn't ask the question, but it's the same thing. It's creation versus gestation. And, and because it's so been diminished by this culture in this day and age, That, that, that's a power that ruins relationships and ruins, ruins marriage because women are disconnected from that power. And, and, and now we're going to see how it's going to happen. Music? This is a song uh, that my friend Johanna in Boulder wrote. Shalom lech mariam, shalom lech mariam. guys seen a pictures of the pregnant Madonna? Have you? Yeah, yeah? where? In Europe. 
Yeah, where? In the cathedrals. Yeah. Yeah, tell me the tell me the cathedral. Hmm? Do you remember the cathedral? No, it was in Greece. In, in Greece. Oh, okay. No, no Western, no Western. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, absolutely. You're right. I, was, I misspoke though, because, but thank you for letting me know. Because in Greece, in Greece I, I definitely. So, this is uh, Piero da Francesca, about 1400 something, and it's uh, called the Madonna del, del Parto, right? Madonna del Parto is, is, a, is, is a premium Madonna. See, it's really revealed. No, it's a re revelation, right? Um, it survived to, for, to us because it was on the border between uh, Umbria and, and Flores, in a very remote area. Okay, because what happened at this time, under the Reformation, you know, right after, you know, this is 1400s, in the early 1500s, was, there was the Reformation, in counter Reformation in Italy. So, so what happened is, in the North, Italy, in North, North Europe, they already don't like the, the Virgin very much, you know? So there was not a problem. But in Italy, it was full of people, of, of, of pregnant Madonnas everywhere, wooden, especially wooden statues. So what they, what they did, they went around and they cut them. They cut them. The only reason we have this painting, is a very famous painter, by the way, is because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in Paonia. When Dante, when, when they published the first book, the Vita Nova, the first time, so in the 50, late 1500s, he was already dead. So all the, the censors, the Dominican censors, went in with a pen and said, see the first page that, that uh, that he read, he used the, he addresses Beatrice as glorious. He used the word beatitude. Uh, then he says, uh, there's something else that, 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 that the, the senses went like, no, can be glorious, can be, can be, um, can be, the, can be a, a beatitude became happiness. So you do understand the, the distance between Happiness and beatitude. Happiness is a fleeting, is a fleeting experience. Beatitude is, is, a, is a, the core of the religious experience. My beatitude has appeared. That's what happened in this first page. It's been censored throughout. So uh, when, when described uh, Beatrice as gloriosa, it says pretty, not glorious. So they went through the, through the book trying to erase any possibility that other being became a, a, a spiritual destination. And, and they did the same thing here with the power of the feminine throughout Europe. It is this what they did. So our experience of, of the erotic is really linked with culture. We've been educated out of this thing. We've been educated and, and intensely out of the experience of this thing. And I'll tell you what, and I'll tell you what this creates real, difference, real difficulties to women and to women to men. Because if you're now close to a woman that is really familiar with capacity to gestate love, is a misery to be near her, no matter, no matter how much you love her. Unfortunately, you know, tomorrow is the time to go into this detail, but... Uh, um, tomorrow will be on Zoom. Uh, tomorrow will, won't be <laughs> here, but, but oh, in the next time, okay. next time. Um, because because the, the other thing is, you know, this is kind of like, the, today is a kind of a tough part. Tomorrow it gets a little bit, you know, would have been a little bit lighter. Because again, you know, I'm, I'm pushing so much on the use of words because words are, are really defi defining your perimeter, the perimeter of your experience. 
Because if you don't know the beatitude is possible with another person, you're not going to get there. You're going to go, or when you get there, you're not going to recognize it. You're going to know what to do. You're going to be very uncomfortable. So that's why I'm thinking these poets are hot, are very, very interesting. So, and I, I'm going to close, close now because, um, and, and um, I'm going to introduce the piece that, uh, it's a beautiful piece that uh, uh, Victor, Adrian Victor is going to read. And, uh, and I want to invite you for a moment to want to recap and I said, you know, this, this, uh, this capacity that we have to experience eternity through the other and to reconnect with the invisible because of the other, right? So I want to just remind you of this thing that we spoke of, this letter that through the other you experience these pregnancies, this very important Life, uh, life changing, altering episodes like what? Uh, what is the first page of the Vita Nova? So I would like uh, Victor to read now, and there's a piece that um, uh, is from Victor Frankl, and uh, and is I think is is the core of the erotic, at least the the, what the way we be, we're talking about right now. And uh, it happens to him uh, where he's uh, in a concentration camp. He's, uh, he's been uh, driven out of a camp to do the day labor. And it's horrible because, you know, there's, there's the Nazi guards all over him. And it's two pages, but he's take it away. It to me. Where is it? You, you, you're going to hand it back to oh, me. Sorry. So from the depths of the darkest modernity, um, this is what Viktor Frankl said. The accompanying guards kept shouting at us and driving us with the butts of their rifles. Anyone with very sore feet supported himself on his neighbor's arm. Hardly a word was spoken. The icy wind did not encourage talk. Hiding his mouth behind his upturned collar, the man marching next to me whispered suddenly, if our wives could see us now, I do hope they are better off in their camps and don't know what is happening to us. That brought thoughts of my own wife to mind. And as we stumbled on for miles, slipping on icy spots, supporting each other time and again, dragging one another up and onward. Nothing was said, but we both knew. Each of us was thinking of his wife. Occasionally, I looked at the sky, where the stars were fading and the pink light of the morning was beginning to spread behind a dark bank of clouds. But my mind clung to my wife's image, imagining it with an uncanny acuteness. I heard her answering me, saw her smile, her frank and encouraging look. Real or not, her look was then more luminous than the sun, which was beginning to rise. A thought transfixed me. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human thought and belief have to impart. The salvation of man is through love and in love. I understood how a man who has nothing left in this world still may know bliss, be it for a brief moment in the contemplation of his beloved in a position of utter desolation, when man cannot express himself in positive action, when his only achievement may consist in enduring his sufferings in the right way, an honorable way. In such a position, man can, 
through loving contemplation of the image he carries of his beloved, achieve fulfillment. For the first time in my life, I was able to understand the meaning of the words, the angels are lost in perpetual contemplation of an infinite glory. In front of me, a man stumbled and those following him fell on top of him. The guard rushed over and used his whip on them all. Thus, my thoughts were interrupted for a few minutes. But soon, my soul found its way back from the prisoner's existence to another world, and I resumed talk with my loved one. I asked her questions, and she answered. She questioned me in return, and I answered. Stop! We had arrived at our work site. Everybody rushed into the dark hut in the hope of getting a fairly decent tool. Each prisoner got a spade or a pickaxe. Can't you hurry up, you pigs? Soon we had resumed the previous day's positions in the ditch. The frozen ground cracked under the point of the pickaxes and sparks flew. The men were silent, their brains numb. My mind still hung to the image of my wife. A thought crossed my mind. I didn't even know if she were still alive. I knew only one thing, which I have learned well by now. Love goes very far beyond the physical person of the beloved. It finds its deepest meaning in his spiritual being, his inner self, whether or not he is actually present, whether or not he is still alive at all, ceases somehow to be of importance. I did not know whether my wife was alive, and I had no means of finding out. But at that moment, it ceased to matter. There was no need for me to know. Nothing could touch the strength of my love, my thoughts, and the image of my beloved. Had I known then that my wife was dead, I think that I would still have given myself, undisturbed by that knowledge, to the contemplation of her image, and that my mental conversation with her would have been just as vivid and just as satisfying. Set me like a seal upon thy heart. Love is as strong as death. And this is the... Uh still in the first page of the Vita Nova, and in just th two lines. And even though her image, which was constantly with me, was the mean by which love ruled me, it was so dignified in, in its power that it never allowed love to govern me without a faithful counsel of reason. In those matters where such guidance was helpful. So even though her image which was constantly with me, nine years old, nine years old, 900, you know, 900 years before this guy, you know, 700 years, 700 is, is exactly the same thing. Nobody speaks about this. I didn't write it. Because a lot of people, there's been a great discussion, you know, if, and especially early on, if Beatrice was a real woman or not, or was just a figment of imagination. Doesn't matter. Or, or, was, or was a representation of, of or was an allegory for something. And um, I say um, Beatrice was. Uh, real human being, an ordinary human being that made Dante extraordinary. Dante was an ordinary human being for Beatrice, but made Beatrice extraordinary. That's Eros. Not only this, but Beatrice 
See, Be Beatrice, the job of Beatrice at this very first page, whatever the first page, we still have to go through the book. But the very first page is what Beatrice does, she enunciates the presence of the God. She's the enunciating angel. That's why I brought this in. She's the enunciating angel to Dante. That's when he receives his enunciation. That will make him extraordinary. And we can't do it by ourselves. Yeah, it, takes it takes two. Or three. Or three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much.